Hello and welcome everyone to another Invent Right TV show. We got a special one for you today. We have our negotiation coach Paul Sorensen on, and his negotiation student T Tammy Dobling, and um, she just closed a licensing deal, and Paul's helping her with yet another one. And she has kind of a unique story in that she wasn't a, a full-on student with us, but she had been following us, read our book, One Simple Idea, got some interest. Paul helped her close the deal, and now she's got interest from another company. So I would say at this point, she is a student, huh, Paul? Yeah, yeah not only another company, but another product in another company. So she is... Yes. She's uh, going all out. She is becoming a professional inventor, for sure. Nice, nice. Tammy, um... You know, you wrote something back to us, and you you wrote that you uh, you read our book, One Simple Idea, and then you mm -hmm. didn't do anything. Right. So what happened there? Well, I was kind of at a standstill. I read it and read it a couple times, actually, like you know, and picked out the parts that were were um, you know that were easy for me to understand, and then I just kind of was at a stuck, you know, and at the end and didn't know how to contact companies and um, wasn't sure, you know, what to do with my, you know, idea. So then I was just like one day, it was about a year ago probably, or a little bit, probably about a year and a half ago, where I'm just like, what what can I do with this? Where where do I go? And then I thought, well, I'll just Google Stephen Key. And then I found your guys' um, YouTube videos and I was hooked. I was like one right after another, watched one right after another and was doing dishes and watch one and you know just kept it going and my even my husband said it's like you're going to school you know and I'm like yeah I feel like I'm in school and I was just like just just like a sponge just sucked it all in and it was just great it was really fun but then you but then you put it down and then you came back to it right yep I put it down I came back to it then I knew okay this is then it was just more clear to me when I watched the YouTube videos you know, step by step, exactly what to do. So then I did the cell sheet. I already had the cell sheet, kind of, but I tweaked it because I was I watched the videos and you know saw you know how to do it better. And then I just would go step by step what the videos would say, and like the small just jump over the hurdles. And they were like low hurdles, but I just would just keep okay. I did this now. The next the next thing, and then um, the company I called was actually a company that I heard on your YouTube channel. So I felt safe in reaching out to them because it was my first one. And because I trusted you guys and I'm like, well, if they trust them, I, I trust them. And I actually got a deal with him. And um, yeah, so, and then I had to, so the last part was doing the contract and I had no clue, you know, he sent me over the, the terms and I was like, Okay, I think they look good by the, you know, because you, you had a YouTube video about the terms to what to expect. But I um, was kind of just like freaking out, you know. And so I called you guys. And then I think I talked to Dana. She was a really good and she helped me um, lead led me to Paul. And then um, had a call with Paul and did like a one time call with Paul. And which was really nice that you guys offer that to non students um, the one time. You know, if you don't want to pay for the whole thing, the whole shebang, you can do that with you guys. And I really appreciate that. That was just like, I mean, great, you know. So it really put me at ease and um, calmed me down. And Paul looked at the terms and was like, okay. And then he led me. He like, you know, just kept leading me what, what to ask for. And, um, you know, just kind of like word for word, told me what to say in the email. And just so it was so easy. And then, um, so then I got the final contract. Paul looked that through. We went over that um, bit by bit, and he explained every um, term to me. So it was really clear that I wasn't like getting a scam or gonna be taken advantage of. So it all, yeah, it was just it made me put my mind at ease, and it was a really good experience. Made you feel a lot more comfortable. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, Paul, so now, what, what, what was she worried about? Was she? I'm sure everybody worries about something or other in a contract or a deal. What yeah, were some of her worries? Contract language is just odd to begin with. And then 
even if it looks good, you don't know if it's normal or if they're trying to slip some tricky thing in. And I've seen that too. Not necessarily that they're trying to trick you, but it's more slanted in their favor. Mm -hmm. And sometimes with just a small ask, they can adjust the contract wording or something, add something in that didn't have. I mean, every contract's so different, it's hard to really say, but um, it's just nice to be able to come and we know what's normal and what's not. More than anything, that's right. That, a huge benefit right right that's great so so you close this deal and now paul's helping you with another deal yeah you're just hitting him out of the park here i guess what's going yeah, on i know yeah my <laughs> husband's like well call paul <laughs> you know because like, <laughs> i'm like what do i do call paul did you talk to paul today yeah so yeah it's been yeah we're trying we're and we're in the process of doing another one and waiting for the contract so, hopefully so, I... so your product's on the market, so you can you can share what it is. Can you go over and share? Uh, well, I don't know if your your if your headset will let you go over there. Yeah. So I'll just unplug myself okay. for a minute. Okay. All right. Can you still hear me though? Yeah, we can hear you. So, it is uh, it's called the cardboard headboard. So it is cardboard based instead of a wood based headboard. So it's lightweight, and I thought for college students because what college students worry about is like the damage to the walls so it is attached to the wall by command strips and then they can un, you know just take a take them off damage free and then they can hang them up themselves so i did you know we did printed ones um we did upholstered ones that are fabric color you know covered and then like you know what like wood look that looks like shiplap so yeah, they're cute and they're lightweight for students and and we just did a um, test run on those this year. So the sales weren't tremendous, you know, but it was fun to get an idea out and knowing that it was mine and it's somewhere and, but it was a test run. So hopefully next year we're going to, he's already talking to me about marketing it differently and, you know, and getting it out there more. And I mean, we, he took me in probably I mean it was so hurried and last minute and thankfully we got it even in the season I couldn't even believe it so we were kind of in the middle of the season the dorm season which only lasts like a three-month period yeah that's that's a unique thing right Paul yeah. I mean it's it's there's it really it's more like I think you told me it's like a two-month window everybody's yeah. buying stuff because they're going back to college and moving into the dorms and and uh, so you, it's, it's a seasonal thing Seasonal yeah, product. Very seasonal. Yep. Yeah. So hopefully next year it'll be a you know a lot more. But you know, it's just fun. Like I said, it's just knowing that I'm able to do this. I have a I have a ton of ideas written in my phone. So I'm not afraid of idea shortage right now. I just like I just can't wait. Now I'm kinda like getting bored with this one already and I'm like ready to move on. Now but, the um, second one that Paul's working you that one's not closed yet, so we can't talk about that particular yeah, product. Yeah. But it's in uh, bathroom, Paul. I guess it's like but it's complete in... different, kind of more of a home goods. Yeah. yeah. But the cool thing is, it's a, almost a completely different category. So it's not like she just is focusing on the dorm stuff. And there's a lot of value to that. There's value to staying in the same category because you get to know the players. But equally so, when you branch out, now you know players in both categories, and and so now she's doing it perfect it just is awesome now how many you didn't reach out to many companies for this first one literally one uh, for licensed, the first right? one yeah. yeah i i did well i i did a couple emails but um that was my first my first one was dorm dorm call and then after him i did a you know before i heard back from him i did a couple but yeah he was the first one i reached out to and then, and then, how many do you reach out for the second one that Paul's helping you with? Probably like six. Wow, not many. Yeah, yeah. you might. Paul, she's she's hitting it out of the park because we were guide people to reach out to 20, 30 companies, know. you know, typically. And, you know, on our third product, I hope not, 
But in her third product, she might need to do that. She might go, right. oh, it's 30 before she gets citrus. But you do have to be careful. I had a student years ago that she licensed very similar. One of the, I think it was the second or third company she called, mm -hmm. they immediately said, yeah, we want to license this. Well, she was a regular student, so we continued to work on more products. But that ruined her. She thought it was always going to be that easy, so she got frustrated fast. Um, it's always good for everybody to realize that it can happen really fast, but it also is more common that you're calling for several weeks or even several months, and we're talking 30, 50, 60 companies that you're going through. Um, but it all is based on the merit of the product, the companies, the list of companies you have, and the timing that you have of hitting that company. And so uh, it can happen, and you're living proof that it can happen. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully it think you know. Hopefully it'll continue. I mean, I'm ready to do the work. It is hard. Um, that is the hard part. It's like you know, finding the companies, you know. But that that's, you know, the hardest part. But that's not even super hard either. So, so. for for anybody that that uh, procrastinated a little bit, like you did, like almost every inventor on the face of the planet does, before they start reaching out to companies, what do you have to say to them about it? about getting going? Uh, well, like you, they always say, just do it because otherwise you're gonna see your product on the shelf and you're gonna be mad. And that's what I kept thinking. I'm thinking this is gonna be in the store and I'm gonna be kicking myself. I don't know why. I feel like everybody could read my mind and know that this thing is, you know, I'm, I have this in my house and, you know, I thought somebody's gonna steal it and I'm gonna be mad. And it's just, I don't know, I just feel like it's just fun to accomplish a dream and a goal, you know, and it makes you feel confident. And the first one you do is the hardest. And the second, I mean, they're all, I mean, I'm only, I'm only on my second one, but um, I feel like already just by doing one, I have so much more confidence. And I even said now with the second one, with my next, every time it's gonna get easier and easier and I'm learning more and more. Paul's sharing um, things with me too, like, uh, not to get into it too deeply, but like as far as like Google searching your patents and, I, you know, he gave me a tip the other day with using a certain site to find, you know, Google patents and that was excellent. I mean, it's stuff you learn too by talking to people and Paul and other, you know, inventors too, I'm sure, um, that it gets easier every time and you learn more and mm -hmm. so it's not, the first one is the hardest. Paul, so do you do you, you feel that, that do you find that that's true? The the more people do it, the more comfortable and familiar it gets, and people just uh, get after, better and better at it. After the first one, you realize that ordinary people can do it. That's how I felt when I licensed my first products. It's like wow, I'm just a normal person. That's kind of cool that I can do that. And then you get a second one, and and you keep moving forward, but. What happens is you get it down, you realize you can do it, and then you start refining yourself in all of the different steps from from fleshing out your product to creating a better sell sheet to getting more comfortable talking to companies as you're pitching. And you do, you just get better and better. And especially when you start getting that experience calling companies, that comes across to them. They can tell this isn't your first rodeo. Because mm -hmm. you kind of, you just flow better and you don't stammer around and sometimes you can even guide them a little bit. And so, yeah, absolutely. The more you do, it's just like any skill. The more you do, the better it is, the better you get at it. Tammy, you had, you had mentioned um, in your email to us that you, know, you're, you, you like doing these seri uh, series, like a lot, you're kind of entrepreneurial and you do these little side hustles and different little businesses you started, but you get bored with them. And then you dump them. Um, do you feel like this is going to that that's not going to be the case with this because you don't need to run a business and do all the boring stuff. You, know, you need to do the outreach, which is boring to some inventors. But how do you compare your past entrepreneurial ventures that you, you've gotten bored of compared to this with licensing? Well, first of all, it doesn't take the money to start it up. You know, you're you just your idea. I mean, and my ideas are pretty and pretty simple and um, the way you you know you guys teach how to do ideas it's pretty um, easy to do 
like prototypes and very you can do it on a very low cost and once you're done i mean once you're done with the deal you can move on to your next and that's perfect timing for me my attention span you know it's like <laughs> yeah stay sticking with the others um like i did a furniture um redid furniture like painting um redoing furniture and selling on on uh, marketplace and i like doing that but it just was a lot of work especially with kids and you know to have to take care of a home this i can do like late at night you know just be on my phone and you know research and you know it's just it's it's perfect it's i love it it's like absolutely the best thing i've and it, when you're when you're done. refinishing some furniture you sell that piece and it was nice you refurbished that piece but when you do this and you license it maybe you're selling tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of units depending on the product exactly. so it has a much higher potential upside right exactly right yeah and i had like a little furniture um shop too above my garage at one point and waiting for people you know kind of like a glorified garage sale it just yeah this is totally different this this will be I always say to my kids and my husband I love doing this this is exactly like it's perfect fit for me and my personality so well th well thank you for asking us to help you with and asking Paul to help you with your project it's a okay. privilege and Paul thank you for helping Tammy close a deal and hopefully another one really soon we'll have her on with the the second one and if not the third and the fourth you know we'll be here for you the negotiation part is Paul really um, that's pretty easy to mess up let's be honest if you don't do it right right Paul? And maybe not even as much mess it up but get less favorable terms than you should mm. yeah yeah Cause I don't think companies are out there inherently trying to cheat inventors but you can always make a with very few exceptions, you can always make a contract a little bit better without getting aggressive with the licensee. The part I was referring to, it's easy to mess it up with the, the deal flow before you get to a contract. That's pretty easy for an inventor to mess up. Yeah, you start throwing numbers out there and it's like, wow, you don't want to do that. You want right. to let them speak first. And that's something that we can help you with the strategy of, of even opening the conversation about it. And is that where you are with the second deal with Tammy? It's it's not like contract. It's more deal flow to get it to there. Is that where you guys are? Kind of the pre-terms. Yeah. 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 So it's perfect because now we can strategize of how to respond to them without uh, positioning ourselves first. We want them to position first so we know what to what we're negotiating against. You know. You're in good hands with Paul Tammy. He's he, oh, I know. He he helps our students uh, every week with with their deals. So he starts to get you know you do something that much, you get pretty good at it. Yeah, um, there is no way I'd be able to do. I mean, that's the one thing you guys kept saying over and over in your videos that you know you and Stephen Key don't do the negotiating alone or the contract alone. And that's the one thing that I could do everything else pretty much, but not not that. And I. Well, I don't one know if day we'll get to the point. Maybe you, yeah. you, you get through this deal and maybe another. You feel like oh, I got it. I don't need you anymore, Paul. I, I can close <laughs> these myself. Oh no, I'll always. I'm sure I always have questions. I. Always... The deals can all be different too. Things, exactly. Different things come up without a doubt. Yep. Paul knows that all too sure. well. But um, okay, guys, I think we need to wrap up. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you're, you're, so you're much. You're a pleasure. You're such a. You're such a. Um, wonderful human being and apparently a really good inventor too well, we'll um, see. <laughs> to boot and paul same for you you're a wonderful human being as well thank you so much for helping tammy appreciate it it's just andrew being silly it's here so pleasant to work with you just uh anything you need we're here oh thank you paul thank you andrew it's i'm very grateful for you you guys and showing me the way here how to do things so thank you so much we'll be here for you every step of the way I want to remind everybody to take care and keep inventing and we'll catch up with you guys next time see you guys bye
Thank you.